Welcome to Inside Texas Golf, your inside look at what makes golf so special in the Lone Star State. I'm Jeff Power. And I'm Jimmy Ratliff. We're here at the stunning Horseshoe Bay Resort in the Texas Hill Country. You know, the great thing about Texas is the weather's nearly perfect all year round. Perfect for a little golf. That's right. You can play it year round here. You can also try to get your game a little bit better. That's what we're going to do here on Inside Texas Golf. Golf tips. We're going to help you play better. Currently, we're here at the par 4 14th, the signature hole for the Swick Rock Golf Course, one of the members' favorites here. Earlier today, I had a chance to talk with Glenn Lee, Director of Golf for Horseshoe Bay Resort. Well, thank you for joining us here today, Glenn. Thanks, Jamie, it's, uh, and welcome to Horseshoe Bay Resort. We're very excited about having you all here today and uh, really looking forward to it. Horseshoe Bay Resort is indeed a beautiful, beautiful area. 7,000 acres it sits on, three golf courses, one in the making right now. Tell us a little bit about what's here at Horseshoe Bay. Horseshoe Bay Resort is a unique property. It's really wonderful. We've got a full service hotel, five restaurants. We've got a spa, a marina, tennis courts, a great putting course. In addition to that, we've got three Robert Trent Jones Senior Golf Courses, and we're in the process of building a fourth golf course, a Jack Nicklaus Signature Course. And specifically about the golf courses, let's get a little bit into that and talk first about the oldest, uh, Swick. Slick Rock. Slick Rock is our members golf course. It's, the, it's probably the most member friendly, golfer friendly golf course of the three. Straightforward golf course, very easy to play. It's got some great holes on it. Uh, number 14 is our signature hole. It's the waterfall hole. You actually drive your cart down through the creek and then back across the top of the waterfall. Unbelievable golf hole, probably the members favorite. And the most challenging has to be the second one, which is Ramrock Golf Course. Tell us, why is that one so tough? Ramrock is definitely the challenger, and, and uh, we've had a lot of different major events here, but the people, the, the most challenging thing about Ramrock is it's challenging off the tee, and then if you miss it from the fairway, right or left, you're going to be left with very difficult chip shots. So it doesn't appear to be a very difficult golf course, but once you get out there and play it, it leaves a lot of people walking off the golf course scratching their head. And it is probably one of the hardest golf courses in the state. Speaking of beautiful, Apple Rock has some of the most spectacular views you'll find on a golf course. No doubt, Jamie, and uh, number 10, 11, 12 are probably our premier holes, but it's really a unique setting and it sits right there on Lake LBJ. And three golf courses just wasn't enough, so now a fourth one is being built called Summit Rock. That's right, Jamie. Summit Rock is a Jack Nicklaus signature golf course. It's built on our Skywater development. Uh, will be some great views, great golf, and very challenging golf for all of us. All right, well, thank you for your time, Glenn. Glenn Lee, Director of Golf here at Horseshoe Bay Resort. Back to you, Jeff. While we're here in Central Texas, we got a chance to go about an hour east to Austin. We went to Lions Municipal Golf Course, which is owned by the University of Texas. It sits on the Bracken Ridge track. UT wants to redevelop the land. Lions Municipal wants to keep things the way they are. We caught up with Ben Crenshaw, among others, to discuss the situation. It provides such solace and uh, peacefulness to a rapidly changing world. Uh, it's much more than a golf course, uh, at least to me. Fittingly, legendary Austin golfer Ben Crenshaw has hole number one named after him at Lions Municipal Golf Course. After all, he is the most high profile supporter of Save Muni. Gentle Ben was the youngest player to win the Men's City Championship at Old Muni back in 1967, which is also the same year that current Lions Municipal head golf pro Lloyd Morrison began working at the West Austin course. There's not another track of land and there's not a, an amount of money that could replace Lions Municipal anywhere else. This is the only place it can be. It's a place to recreate that is unlike any other place in Austin. Obviously this place has been here since the 20s and has provided uh, such enjoyment and tranquility to so many people. In 2019, the City of Austin's lease will expire with Lions Municipal. The land which the golf course sits on is owned by the University of Texas and is part of the 345-acre Brackenridge track. Colonel George Brackenridge donated the land to the UT system in 1910, but that land is very valuable and is on the banks of Ladybird Lake that runs through downtown Austin. Golf designer Roy Bechtel and Crenshaw's Longhorn teammate Tom Kite want a renewal of the golf course. Kite, who also grew up in Austin, has hole number 14 at Lions, named after him, and he wants to work with the community to preserve the history of the course while presenting a new historic chapter in golf design. Any rational person can, can honestly see both sides of the argument. Uh, you can sit there and see one of the most valuable pieces of property, undeveloped property, uh, in, in Texas. Just sitting there uh, at the hands of the University of Texas 
uh, where the legislature is cutting budgets and, and it's more and more difficult for the alumni to, to, to make these huge donations and the university is having to cut, cut, cut and they've got a piece of property there that is worth multi, multi millions and they're getting basically nothing for it. To truly understand the story, you have to look at the history of this course, which opened in 1924 and was recently given a historical marker for being the first golf course south of the Mason-Dixon line to desegregate. General Marshall was a caddy at Lyons Municipal in the late 1940s and early 50s and was among the first African Americans to play golf on Old Muni. Hole number eight bears his name and the former Houston Tillotson professor and HT golf coach grew up in Clarksville, just a few blocks from Lyons. On several occasions, I tried to slip on the course with a group of young men from Clarksville, and we would slip on number 17 on rainy days, but uh, and invariably we would get caught and we would play just that one hole because it was close to our home. A Save Muni campaign was formed in 1973. Mary Arnold was on that committee and has kept the fight alive ever since. The Board of Regents appointed a committee to look at the history and, and future of the Brackenridge Tract and that group came back and said, uh, don't extend the lease beyond 2019 and do a master plan for the whole thing, including the golf course. Billy Claggett is also a legend of Lions. The 1994 city champion has won six Firecracker Opens at Old Muni and has hole number 10 bearing his name. I, it's hard to say what impact it would be on me. I don't know if I would ever come by here again. It would hurt too much to see this place gone. Uh, so much in the world has changed, but I hate, to, I hate to see it come to West Austin like that. Well, we've heard from the Save Muni campaign. What about the other side of the story? Coming up in our next show, we'll talk with Tom Kite, among others, about the University of Texas's plans for the Brackenridge track. Plus, we'll have more in this show with Ben Crenshaw. It's Inside Texas Golf. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Dwinnell, and we're going to talk about shoulder injuries in the golfer. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have experienced pain in your shoulder at times. And sometimes these can be disabling and can really affect our game. These things are very difficult sometimes to diagnose, usually employing x-rays or ultrasound or MRI to help with the diagnosis. However, rarely are these helpful. Occasionally, surgical intervention is necessary, but most of the time, conservative measures, including the three R's, will be employed. The three R's being pain relievers, rehabilitation, and rest. Now, pain relievers such as ibuprofen and anti-inflammatory may be helpful. Also, rehabilitation with a physical therapist to help improve the strengthening and the overall coordination and strength of the shoulder will be helpful as well. The third R, however, rest is gonna be much more difficult at six to 12 weeks off a golf course is not an option. So maybe there are ways we can employ our golfing to lessen the chance of suffering injuries in the first place. This may be to flatten out the swing, to avoiding divots that can be very shoulder jarring. Also a more comfortable and smooth backswing also may help in relieving injuries as well. Also carrying your clubs in a manner that puts less pressure on the shoulder may be helpful. Whatever you do to try to avoid these injuries will keep us on the golf course longer and keep injury free. I'm Dr. Mark Dwinnell. This portion of Inside Texas Golf is brought to you by G-Glove, the best way to keep your club grips dry in wet course conditions. By Peters Group, marketing and public relations, we bring your story to life and build market loyalty. By Navajo Skin Care, feel what your skin's been missing, nourish via natural vitamin A, C, E, and K2. Rejuvenate with natural peptides from Navajo Skin Care and by a legacy of giving. Educating Central Texas children on the power of philanthropy help make a difference. Introducing the G-Glove, the best way to keep your golf club grips dry and clean while you play. Wet grass, sand, dirt, and mud all reduce the effectiveness of your club grips when laid on the ground. G-Glove slides over your grips and eliminates the struggle to protect your grip while you play. G-Glove covers two clubs and works with most standard and oversized grips. G-Glove is moisture resistant and protects against mist, rain, and even pesticides. G-Glove is flexible and fits into your pocket or golf bag. Listen to what these golfers had to say. With the G-Glove, I can lay my clubs down anywhere. Towels get wet, but the G-Glove keeps my clubs dry. It slides on real easy. I can use it for one club, I can use it for two clubs. 
I've been caught in the rain with G-Glove, and that's not a problem. G-Glove can also help you keep track of your clubs. You only need one G-Glove. It fits every club in the bag. G-Glove is only $9.99 and is available in seven colors. Protect your grip from dew, mist, and rain while you play. Visit our website and order your G-Glove today. You can advertise or sponsor a segment of Inside Texas Golf. Just call Jody Park and ask to be a part of our show. 